Hi there, I'm Matthew. And I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about the American Brown Ale. Now what's so special about the American Brown Ale, you might ask, compared to its English counterparts, the English Brown Ales? And really it comes down to one word, hops. Now there could be a, many, many more subtle differences, but like the English Brown Ale, which uses caramel malt and chocolate malt, uh, the Americans go that way, except they tend to hop it up a lot more. And that's not true just with brown ales. That's also true with things like uh, pale ales, IPAs, barley wines. Americans basically like uh, their music loud, their cars fast, and their beers hoppy. Right Now, today we're going over a beer that's been around for a while. Uh, it's from Avery, and it's called Avery Ellie's Brown Ale. That's right. Um, Avery uh, Brewing Company uh, was founded in Colorado in 1993 by a gentleman named Adam Avery. Um, and in 1992, he had a little puppy named Ellie. Um, and Ellie was a chocolate lab. Um, Ellie is unfortunately no longer with us. She died in 2002. Um, however, there, she gave her namesake to this beer, which is one of Avery's flagship beers. Uh, so hence we have Avery's... Ellie's Brown Ale. Um, now this is a great little beer. It's um, real chocolatey and malty, um, and but it also has that big, big American hop presence that you don't find, as uh, Aaron mentioned, in the English counterparts. So uh, why don't we stop talking about it and go ahead and taste it, and uh, we'll get into it a little bit. All right. And as Matthew said, Avery started up in 1993 which is kind of right when a few breweries started started up. I think Lagunitas is around that time. Maybe maybe Abita and Sweetwater, those kind of mid to early 90s. Uh, yeah, and this is in Colorado, by the way. Boulder, Colorado. I don't know if we said that or not. Yep. And that, that time frame of the early 90s is where a lot of our, what are now our major um, American craft breweries, during that time period is when a lot of them started to get their start. Um, particularly in the Colorado areas, um, as well as the Pacific Northwest, and really the West Coast in general. All right. All right, well, let's take a look at it. All right. Ooh. So this is a lot darker than I, than, than I anticipated. Sure, yeah. It um, obviously uses a lot more chocolate malt um, than some of the English brown ales that we've tried, um, like Sam Smith's Nut Brown Ale. Mm -hmm. um, certainly a darker color. Um, now, it is clear. I can see the refractions of light um, through the bottom gleaming off of the glass. And around the edges. And too, yeah, yeah, absolutely, right around the edges. So despite the fact that I can't see directly through the glass, I do know that this beer is filtered. Um, but you have really nice, deep, kind of caramel, uh, burnt brown sugar, touches of like a ruby red and garnet color. Yeah, I almost see like a really dark blood red, sure. blood red color in it. Yeah. And we also have a little bit of a nice coloration, almost like a, um, almost looks like chocolate milk as far as the, the color of the head is concerned, um, with very loose bubbles that have kind of formed almost like a creamy texture on, uh, crowning the beer. Mm -hmm. All right, let's give it a smell. Now, if you notice when we're smelling, we always make sure that we smell with all four nostrils that we have. That's uh, two at, yeah, I know, there's four. Uh, you've got uh, two at the same time, you've got your left, your right, and then you got two at the same time upside down. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I get a lot of bitterness from, from, mm -hmm. from a coffee, almost mm -hmm. a coffee bitterness from it. Yeah, it's like almost like a cold pressed coffee, mm -hmm. really rich richness to it with some underlying chocolate, and there is some like almost like an earthy pine, so like mm -hmm. almost like a sap to it as well, which is coming from our hops. Okay. Yeah, yeah. most most of the most of the smell I'm getting is is, is roasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that comes from the malt, the roasted malts. Um, what they'll do is a lot of times brewers will use pale malts and then actually roast them to um, very specific specifications. If I can be redundant for a second, maybe you can be redundant. Maybe I will be redundant. That's pretty redundant. Let's taste this beer. Cheers. Cheers. I get a, a lot, the taste is a lot smoother than I expected because the, the aroma is, is kind of in your face, in your, no, in your nose, so to speak. Um, but the aroma is so in your face, it, it, it's really a smooth, well-rounded beer. Yeah, you still definitely get that coffee, and it does have these chocolate complementary flavors to it. Um, but it doesn't have that bitterness, um, that kind of, uh, it doesn't seem to have quite the impact on the palate that it did on the nose. Mm -hmm. I can almost smell the, I can still almost smell the beer, even being this far away from it. 
Um, the taste is a little bit more minimal than that. Um, however, it's still really kind of got a, a nice medium. You know you're drinking a beer, um, but it's not going to weigh you down and it's not particularly in your face. Just very well composed flavors mm -hmm. um, that are really brought together pretty artfully. Yeah, I don't get any heat from the alcohol. It's, I believe, five and clocks in about five and a half percent. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't get any alcohol heat whatsoever. Like I said, the only bitterness that I'm getting is really from that roasted uh, that roasted coffee, yeah, uh, a little bit on a uh, little bit at the end, uh, but it's it's a really well round. I keep saying this, but it's a really well rounded beer. It doesn't have any uh, uh, edges that are sharp. All the edges have been sanded down a, a little bit. Sure, and it's it's there is definitely in the in the hang or the finish. Um, there is still kind of a lingering, almost like a pine needle or pine sap, um, which is pretty indicative of the American style of brown ale, um, as opposed to the English style. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really nice kind of a lasting flavor. It's not really, really intense, um, but it is, it definitely sticks with you. You know, you know you're drinking a beer when you're having this. There's no mistake about that. Yeah, it's definitely a very, very strong finish and a, and a strong hang for that beer. Again, without the alcohol warm. Sure. But the flavors definitely persist after after the beer is out of your mouth. Sure, absolutely. Now, as far as uh, serving this beer at a brass tap goes, um, this is a really nice beer to suggest to a guest that already kind of knows a little bit of cra about craft beer and isn't afraid to try a beer that's this dark in color. Um, oftentimes, your darker beers can sometimes be intimidating to somebody that isn't really familiar with a variety of styles, um, you know, people oftentimes have sent, uh, equate a darker colored beer with a very heavy, very thick, full beer, um, which isn't always the case, and in this case certainly is not. Um, this is very medium bodied, uh, very well put together and balanced um, with a lot of enjoyable flavors. So you might have to use a little bit of suggestive selling and use some of your own experiences and your own terminology to be able to get a guest to try a beer that's this dark in color. Um, but feel, you know, feel confident that once somebody tastes this, they'll really appreciate it for the delicious beer that it is. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of those uh, step ups as far as palate progression mm -hmm. goes. If your guest, you know, tried something like a Samuel Smith nut brown ale or, or an English brown ale, that's a little bit toned down uh, as far as the intensity of flavors go. This is a great kind of maybe a half a step up as far as flavor intensity goes. And it's a great way to get your feet and your tongue wet. Absolutely. All right. Cheers. Cheers.